Hi, Hannah. Hello. Welcome to the PLT podcast. It's nice to be here. Thank you for having me. It's so nice to have you here. I feel like I know you already. Right. But we've okay. never met before. No, we've not. Literally, we've just been sat here chatting, but it's I feel like so I know nice. you already, so it's great. I'm excited to get to know you a little bit better and let our listeners get to know you a little bit further. Yeah. So I think we should start at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And I want to know, who was Hannah Renee? before YouTube? Oh gosh, that is a question. Do you know what? It feels like I've been doing YouTube that long that it, I feel like I don't know anymore. Well, I do know, but <laughs> it feels like I've been on the platform for like the longest time. Yeah. Um, it's been like maybe five years now, I want to wow. say. So pretty much like when I was in college, I started doing Instagram and YouTube and okay. things like that. And then um, like went into Mac and makeup and things like that. And then yeah. started it full time. So honestly, I don't know. Like for the longest time, I never knew what I wanted to do when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, like I found this. But I've always been quite like creative and stuff like that. So I guess the same girl, but maybe like not as confident, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. So how old were you when you actually first started YouTube? Um, so I was about 16. Okay. Um, so I started on Instagram and then kind of built like a little bit of a following there and then pretty much just transferred it over onto YouTube. I didn't realize that you started so, on Instagram. Yeah. I thought it was YouTube first. Yeah, so I was basically too scared to do YouTube with like no subscribers oh because gosh. I just felt like no one was watching and it was quite overwhelming. And I was also so bad at speaking to the camera when I first started. I can't imagine that. Honestly, like my first two videos were me not talking. Like they were just little makeup videos with music over because I just oh couldn't do God. it. Um, but I basically built up like a little bit of a following on Instagram and yeah. then I did like a giveaway where you had to like subscribe to my new channel, like planned it all out, thought it all had. Oh my God. So yeah. And then I started YouTube. How exciting. I know, it's fun. What made you first decide, you know, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, wanna start this? Did you have a career in mind or was it just a bit of fun? Um, I feel like I basically discovered the beauty community on YouTube, like yeah. probably a year prior. And then because I was in like, high, well, I must have just started college at the time. And I didn't really know what I was doing. I was doing A-levels and stuff, which were quite academic. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, I just like really got into makeup. Like I started watching a lot of videos. I was watching Jaclyn Hill a lot. And then I got really like into makeup after my prom because I had my prom makeup done at Mac and then just like fell in love with it. And I was like, this is what I want to do. Oh my God, how exciting. I know. And you were working at Mac at the time, weren't you as well? Yeah, so I basically got my job at Mac a little bit after. Um, So I, after college, I didn't know if I was going to go to uni or not. Um, But I decided I was going to have a gap here and just kind of give it a go. And then luckily I got, a Christmas temp job at Mac oh my God, and then started learning makeup there. So. And look where you are now. I know, and now How we're incredible. here. <laughs> because YouTube is now your full-time career. Well, yeah. YouTube and Instagram. Yeah. And you've got almost half a million subscribers on you YouTube. you know, it's really closing in. I'm like, come on, there's less than 10K to go now. I'm like, it's gonna happen soon. That is crazy. I know, How so do you crazy. feel having so many people watching you, what you do every day? It's, do you know what, it's strange, but it's like also the best thing ever because everyone's so friendly and so kind. Yeah. I feel like I'm very lucky in the sense that I don't get a lot of like negativity right. or hate or anything like that. And everyone that I meet like out and about is always really friendly and really nice. So it's kind of like just having extended friends, yeah. I guess, which is great. So yeah, I love it. And talking about friends, you actually like to get your subscribers involved in your videos yes, as well. Always. That's something I love about you. And I feel like I've never seen anyone do that oh, before. Thank you. Tell me about that. Like what made you decide, okay, I'm gonna include my subscribers in my videos? Yeah, so I don't know. I always like I always like to think of ways to thank people yeah. because I guess I, when I started, I never thought I'd get here. Like no one ever does, I guess. Yeah. Um so I always like to think of ways to kind of thank people and get people involved. And um, we do like the Christmas party sometimes, like we've done that twice which was really fun. Mads was there with me. You need Rachel to tell Jordan me about that. You need to tell me about these Christmas parties. Yeah. Okay, so Rachel was actually on the podcast not long ago. Yeah. And she mentioned your Christmas parties to me. And I was like, <clears throat> okay, what's like, the deal with these Christmas parties? So I had a little look into them. And yeah. I'm like, okay, tell me about the Christmas parties. Yeah, they sound honestly, amazing. There's so much fun. We've only done it twice. Okay. Um, and it's basically just organized by like me, friends yeah. and then my family like my family are so great bless them like my mom and dad they're like my rocks they just help me out with everything oh, no they're way. so good um so we basically just like hire out a little space mm-hmm. we sell like maybe 200 to 300 tickets and that pretty much just covers the cost of the venue yeah. and then we'll hire like catering we'll have like hair and uh, makeup artists like loads of stuff going on and then people just come and like basically just like hang out and chat to everyone and it's really fun how so, amazing i know honestly it's so much fun and i feel like the two years that we've done it we've got such good feedback um but it's just like i said just a way to like thank people and just mm-hmm. like give back i guess and say thank you for supporting me so yeah and with that with your subscribers have you ever experienced any 
awkward situations when you've met subscribers? Like, has anyone ever taken Ooh. it kind of too far? Because I guess they feel like they know you. Yeah. And that you are friends. Yeah. Have you ever had any Do you know what? Moments? I feel like maybe not, or maybe not strange moments, but maybe I feel like sometimes people will say hello and then not know what to say. Oh. Like, I feel like sometimes people say hello and then they kind of like don't know what to say next and they kind of yeah. just stand there and then you just have to like talk to them and just like come out with loads of stuff and it's like blah, 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 like complete word vomit. But I've never, I've never had anything too strange, yeah. luckily. <laughs> it's always interesting when people cry. That's kind of a strange no one, I guess. Way. But for the most part, people are always really friendly, so. It must be quite overwhelming for them though, because I imagine it, like they're fans of you. Right. So, right, I'm a big fan of Justin Bieber. It's like me meeting Justin Bieber. I feel like it's that's not on that level though. That's like, how I, I don't feel get it, it. Is. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't know, I guess I just don't see it on that level. I always try and make people feel like really welcome and like, like they're chatting to a friend. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. Some people are just so, like, everyone's always so sweet, though. So I always, like, leave situations like that feeling really, like, happy and inspired and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's a really so. nice thing to do. Yeah, definitely. So I guess we need to ask, mm. is there a big one happening this year? And if so, <clears throat> how do we get an invite? I no. I mean, Mads is nodding over there. Maybe, like, I'm <laughs> not you, sure. Madison. <laughs> I feel like we want to organise it. Do you know what? The last, the one last year was quite stressful to do. Okay. Um, I can imagine. Just because it's, like, pretty much just me organising it. Like, it all... Lots of things fell through, like everything had to be really last minute. And yeah. it was just because it's Christmas time as well. And there's already like yeah. Christmas shopping and things like that. Like there was just a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe we'll do a birthday one actually. I feel like a birthday Ooh. one could be really fun. Okay. So it's like middle of the year instead. And then it's like less stress at Christmas. So that would be coming soon then? Yeah, like summertime. Ooh, a exciting. summer one would be fun actually, I think. I think all of our listeners would be down for that. I mean, see you there. And I mean, see yeah, we're, we're free. Well, like I'm just great. letting you know, PLT no girls are free, okay? I mean, <laughs> I need to have you there. So thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, so tell me about how your content has changed. So from yeah. when you started, when you were 16, to where you are now, how do you think your content has changed? So I guess like when I started, it was mostly makeup. Mm -hmm. And then I branched out into clothing, which I feel like a lot of my audience then came from like fashion yeah. hauls and stuff like that, which I still love doing. Yeah. And now, obviously when I started, I was 16. And I'm 20, 21 now. I had to think about that. <laughs> I was like, I'm 21, am I 22? <laughs> um, I'm 21 now. So I feel like my life is obviously a lot different. Like. Yeah. When I was younger, I was like more into just doing like makeup and things like that. Whereas now, like I spend a lot of time with friends, we go out a lot. Yeah. Um. I feel like my content's definitely matured. Mm -hmm. Maybe drink a little bit too much alcohol <laughs> in some of my videos. Like maybe need to bring no, that in you a bit. Don't. Um. But I feel like it's definitely matured. But in the same way that my audience has matured with me, I guess like it works quite well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like people are enjoying content at the minute. I like to think. They I are. definitely agree. I feel like I'm doing more vlogs, like more personal stuff, yeah. like. Rather than sit down stuff all the time, I kind of like to kind of invite people in a little bit more and see more of my actual life. Yeah. So I feel like I've been doing a lot more vlogs and things like that. So hopefully people are enjoying it. I'm sure they are, yeah. I am. Well, I'm you. really enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> what has the journey been like for you going from doing YouTube as a hobby is a bit of fun mm -hmm. to actually making it this big career that you've now got? Yeah, crazy really, honestly. Um, I just love every second of it. And it's one of those where it's like, you never know how long you're gonna be doing it. Cause obviously yeah. it's a very strange industry and things like that. Um, nothing's like ever guaranteed with it. So it's one of those, like I'm just literally just enjoying every day that I do this. Like I feel like I sit down every day. I always feel so grateful for what I do. Um, I have so many people helping me. Like, yeah. like I said, my mom and my dad are amazing. I have mm -hmm. management, which are great. Um, my manager, Rebecca is like my rock. Like Aww. she honestly is just the best. Like she helps me out with so much stuff. Um, and I get to work with amazing brands like PLT. So oh, yeah, it's all good. Like it's fun. It's just, I guess an, I've, I've adjusted more now to like how it is as a business rather yeah. than a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, but I still just see it as like, you know, me just like filming stuff, which is good. So yeah, I'm so, I still love doing it just as much as I did to begin with, which is what I always That's wanted. So yeah. And are there any other, any days where you're just like, you don't know what to film, where yes, you feel completely always. inspired. Oh, well, not always, but a lot. <laughs> not like, always. Oh, every day. <laughs> um, no, there is a lot, I guess, but I feel like, I don't know, do you know what? Since I've switched up my content a bit more, I feel like I have more free reign of stuff. Yeah. So now that I do more vlog stuff and like, but I still do hauls and I'll still do tutorials. Like there's kind of an endless amount of stuff that you can do with that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's sometimes difficult if you get into like a bit of a creative block. Yeah. But I just, if I ever get like that, then I just won't force myself to do something because I'd never want to put out content that's not, that I don't think is worth watching. Yeah. So I'll just like have a moment, have a think, and then 
come back. <laughs> okay. You share so much with the world online. Mm -hmm. What would you say are the biggest pros or is the biggest pro and the biggest con to putting your life out there on the internet? Um, I like I like the fact that people feel like they can relate to me. Mm -hmm. So I like sharing stuff and then it's always really nice hearing from girls or guys that are like, thank you so much for talking about this. Yeah. I'm going through the same situation and it's nice to know that you are as well. And it's, it's almost like therapeutic, I feel like for people to, I don't know, see stuff happen and go yeah. through something with someone else if they're going through the same. Yeah. I guess the only con is then like maybe sharing, sharing stuff that then maybe changes in your life and then getting questions about it mm -hmm. or I don't know, maybe sharing something and then regretting sharing it or whatever it may be. Um, or people maybe feeling like they're entitled to know more about something yeah. that you don't want to talk about, I guess. Yeah. But it doesn't happen too much. So I, I like the fact that I can talk about a lot of stuff and share a lot of stuff and it, I guess, like sometimes helps people. That's so, it. Yeah. But it is sometimes weird then when maybe you like share something that and then your life changes. Yeah. And then, you know, people still want to know about it, but you're kind of like past it. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. That's it's something that's going on at the minute. I think we'll maybe talk about that okay. a little bit later on. Yeah. But something I want to know, YouTube is quite a saturated place right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on there. Yeah, for sure. So what would you say is the secret to cracking YouTube, to being oh, successful? I get this question like probably every <laughs> it's day. It's a hard question. Honestly, um, it's difficult. I feel like when I started, even though it started as a hobby, I still kind of had a little bit of a plan of what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, like I said, I started on Instagram and then I kind of like went across to YouTube mm -hmm. and did it that way. But even so, like Instagram is very saturated as well now. Yeah. So like overall, all I feel like everyone kind of wants to do social media. Yeah, like someone was telling me the other day that kids in school, for example, like primary school, when people ask what they want to do when they grow up, it'll be like be a YouTuber. Yeah, yeah. Things like that. So I know a lot of people want to do it. And that's kind of, I mean, the problem maybe for like people that are wanting to do it and wanting to grow. Yeah. But I would just say like post as much as possible know your like niche, know, yeah. know what content you want to do, um, promote yourself. I feel like that's never a bad thing to like share Put your content. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, totally. And just like tweet people, like comment on other people's videos, like kind of network that way. Um, and just enjoy yourself, I guess. And not expect too much of it because yeah. it can be hard. Like even now, like there's definitely times where I feel like I'm really struggling and I'm not doing what I want to do or like going where I want to go yeah. or growing the same way or whatever. So it's always like an up and down thing. Um, I think you just have to accept that it's not stable and just like give it your best mm -hmm. shot, so. And with yeah. that, where do you think you would like to go with YouTube? What is the big plan? Do you oh, have a big plan? I don't know. When I when I started, I always said that I wanted to reach a million subscribers, but like, I don't- I mean, you're not that far away. Well, Half I, a million I, people. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm wow. like as bothered about that now because yeah. I feel like I'm in such a good place where I'm lucky to do it full time. Yeah, like, I have course. a nice like group of people watching me and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Like it's a nice amount of people I feel like, so. I guess to just continue to post, try different types of content yeah. um, and just to like continue to work with brands that I really love because that's always really rewarding as well. Um, but you know what? I feel like really happy with where I am at the minute, so. You should be. Yeah. That's like good. good. <laughs> you are, you're doing you. really good. Okay, let's talk about friendship. Okay. We've got a friend in the room. We have. We've got Madison and Sarah We've in the got corner my right over there. Claw. So let's just, let's just talk about Madison and Rachel at the minute. Yeah. You've got a bit of a trio thing going on, a bit of a duo with you, Madison, yeah. as well. What's going on with you three, you two at the minute? Tell so, me. So, yeah, obviously Madison's like my partner in crime. We're like soul <laughs> sisters, we're two of the same. We were just talking about this, honestly. We're like so similar as people. Yeah. Um, and do you know what? It's really sweet because we do so much content together now. I feel like we get like, comments and questions all the time about the how too. yeah like girls wish they had friend like a friendship like ours because oh, we are genuinely like that. such good friends stop crying <laughs> um mads is shedding a tear I in know, the corner there tear, but um no we're just like the bestest of friends and we spend so much time together and yeah. same with rach like rach rach is actually my oldest friend on youtube yeah yeah so she is the first person that i like made friends with through youtube because wow. me and mads actually met through mac not many people know that so we were friends like prior so you were both working there yeah oh so my we both god went to mac at the same time. and you both Manchester girls, aren't you? Yeah, it's we so are. nice to see like two Manchester girls That's like what I killing mean. it on YouTube. Oh, thank you. It's amazing. It's so much fun. But um, yeah, Rachel was like my first friend through YouTube, okay. and we actually weirdly got in touch through Mac as well because she also worked at a Mac in Guildford. Oh my god! Yeah. Okay. Um, because I was basically posting a lot of like Mac content on my channel yeah. at the time, and she kind of reached out to me and was like, "Just so you know, like." managers can sometimes be a bit funny about that like that type of thing so she was okay. kind of looking out for me That's which was so really good. sweet yeah and then we like um we organized like a little shopping date together in like london and stuff yeah. and then 
just became best friends. The and rest now is we history. Like I know. Look at you three. I know. And so you've been filming together quite a lot. I absolutely mm-hmm. love these videos, oh, thank by you. the way. I think everybody does. so much fun. But are there any plans for you three? Do you see this trio Ooh. going any further professionally? I don't know. We spoke about doing like band. merch, but I don't. Have you? We have spoke about that. We kind Tell of joked. Well, Come we, on. we joked about it Drop in a video juice. because we have so many like inside jokes yeah. now that everyone else knows about. Actually, that's something I want to ask. I'm going to interrupt there. Okay. So there's an inside thing going on at the minute. Right. It's a pose, and I need to know about the, is the there, claws. Is it, no, 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 not the claws. Okay. Oh, it's the claw too, but there's a facial expression oh right now. Oh my gosh. So we get pulled up on that all the time. Yeah, it's like the little. <laughs> Tell me. Right. Yeah. Let's look to the camera for the people watching on oh, YouTube. No, I can't Sorry, do people listening. I've got to do it. I'm gonna do my impression. Okay. Madison, can you see us? Okay. Can you see? Right, ready? One, two, I'm being you two. Mine doesn't look good though. <laughs> I mean, mine probably didn't either there. Wait, did you do a I don't wait, know where, did you do this? I mean, sometimes there's a little something as well. Yeah, it's just whatever <laughs> comes. But do you know what? I've realized Tell we do it too it. much. I don't no, know where it came it. from. I love it. Tell us about it. I don't know where it's come from. I don't know what happens. I, it I just enjoy, started. I thought it was gonna be like some big meaning. I, I mean, I don't know, is there? I feel like I feel like it just started from somewhere <laughs> one day. I don't know. It's just that face when it's like there's oh. no words. Okay. It's just like Okay. No words. Yeah. Okay. That's that's what we'll it's take from it. It's just a mood. It's like a mood. Yeah. It's a but it's like mood. a constant mood. I love yeah. that mood. Okay. Yeah. And so you've clearly got some amazing friends in the industry, but what about your personal life? So like yeah. let's call it like your not real life, yeah, but not I guess your so. YouTube life. Mm-hmm. Do you have friends that aren't in the industry that Yeah, definitely. Um well I, ha- I feel like I have a small group of friends yeah. because there's only certain people that you stay in touch with. And I feel like, I don't know, I choose who I spend my time with quite wisely, yeah. I like to think. So I only really have two friends from high school and then one friend from college now. So like Millie, Del, and Isla. Oh, hi um, guys. And they're like my closest friends outside of YouTube, I guess. So, which I love them. They're great. Yeah. They're all doing like totally like different things now, which is so cool. Um, but I've known them for a long time and it's like nice still being able to like keep in touch with them. Yeah. We we're actually with Millie yesterday because oh. um, she's just finished her exams for the year and stuff. So yeah, oh, like- Congrats, Millie. I know. It's a big thing. I know, but overall, I feel like I have quite a small friend group, which yeah. I love. So it's like, we're all very close knit. But I'm interested, what do they think of your lifestyle? Like, what do they think of you being this big YouTube star? Because- Yeah, I don't know. I guess like they just see me as Han. Yeah. Um, same way like my family do. Yeah. Like especially Millie and Dell, like I've known them for quite a while now. I've known them like my whole childhood pretty much. Um, they just see me as me. So, but you know, if we're ever out together and people come and say hello, they always like love it. And they're, do they? they're so supportive. Yeah, they're That's like so such good. good, like they're just incredible. So yeah, they're really supportive and really like good to me as well, which is amazing. So I hope they're all listening now. Hello, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now something I want to ask your opinion on mm-hmm. is YouTube drama. Okay. Okay, so, I mean, I'm going to talk about a topic that's going off at the minute. It's Tati and James. Wow. Right. Ooh, so okay. it's, not, it's not specific to you, but okay. there seems to be a bit of drama mm-hmm. when it comes to the makeup, the beauty side of YouTube. Yeah. Would you agree? I guess so. I feel like in the UK we're not as bad. I feel like yeah. it's usually like more of an American thing. It does seem to be heightened yeah. in the US. Isn't yeah, it? Like that situation that's happening right now is a big, a big thing. Thing, literally. Every, everything happening. in general, like beauty community wise, I feel like is always so like it's times ten. Yeah, compared to here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting situation. I mean, I don't know either of them personally. I've never met James no. or Tati, but it's just. I don't know. It's a strange one. I watched her video and it was sad to watch. I feel mm. like you could see she was genuinely like yeah. hurt by some of the things that were going on. Um, I don't know. It's a tricky one, isn't it? It is. Have you ever experienced any, not necessarily to that scale, because yeah. that's huge. Like you yeah. said, I do think it's heightened in the US, but have you ever experienced any sort of YouTube beef? Um, Just point it out there. Straight beef. Straight beef. <laughs> I feel like... No. That's good. That's good. Keep it positive. I feel like... <laughs> no, I feel like no. I feel like everyone that I've met is always very kind, very yeah. polite. That's that's one thing that I love. Everyone in this industry, I think, is very polite from the people that I've met anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like luckily never really got myself in the deep end with anything. Touch wood somewhere. That's good to <laughs> um, know. But yeah, positive no, vibes. everyone, I feel like we're all just very chill. We all just kind of like keep to ourselves and our friends and, you know, we're all very like supportive of each other which is good so yeah good to know good to know okay we're gonna go on to something a little bit more not serious mm-hmm. but a, a bit of a topic now so social media mm-hmm. there's a bit of a debate at the minute 
with social media, in particular Instagram, and the way it affects us mentally. Yeah. What are your views on how social media is affecting us as people mentally? Um, it's one of those. I feel like I feel like you have to find a balance with social media as to like how much time you actually spend on it. Yeah. Um, I definitely feel like things like Instagram um can be quite sometimes like quite detrimental like de- yeah. detrimental I guess to your you mental health um to, especially for like well girls and boys but especially yeah. for girls with like you know like self-confidence mm-hmm. body image body that confidence. type of yeah it's it's a lot mm. um and I feel like because it's an, a thing that's like grown so much recently like especially for girls growing up and stuff like yeah. if you're spending too much time on it and guys like I just think I think it can be quite have quite a big impact on your mental health, yeah. not in like the best way. Um, but I think it really just does depend like how you spend your time on it, who you follow, like yeah. ha- like what you're actually doing on social media, because it can be a really great thing depending on like who you actually follow. Exactly, there is good. Yeah, to definitely. It as well. Like I was reading about this on Twitter the the other day. It really does just depend like what you're actually doing on social media yeah. because you can easily just get like sucked into a trap of like I don't know. I've done it myself where I've been on Instagram and looking through like loads of pages of like beautiful girls and, and stuff stuck, yeah. yeah and you just end up feeling not the best about yourself but then there's so many good things to it as well and there's so much you can learn from social media yeah. um so it kind of just like depends how you spend your time but you just have to be aware of it I think mm-hmm. it's not necessarily a bad thing you just have to be aware of like taking care of yourself yeah speaking on the way the Instagram can affect us as people you've actually done a video in the past and you mentioned on the video that I think you said social media can be the devil when it comes to body confidence. Yeah. You sound like you're speaking from experience. Yeah. What made you decide to talk about that then? Like, um, do you know what? If I ever do advice videos or like chat videos, I get a lot of questions about body confidence and like okay. how to be confident in yourself. Yeah. Um, and I just know from personal experience, like like I said, I've ended up on Instagram and yeah. in what feels like a black hole, just like going through my explore page and seeing so many like beautiful girls, mm-hmm. like you know, with beautiful features and bodies and things like that. And then just feeling like I'm not great, (laughs) which is so silly. Like it's so silly to think of that. And it's like, you're aware that it's stupid, but you can't help it. So I feel like, again, it's just one of those things that I like to talk about every now and then because it kind of reminds people that everyone goes through that. You're a real person as well. Yeah, no one's alone in that situation. Like everyone's going to be affected like that somehow at some point. Um, But you just got to be aware of it and just know like, not to compare yourself to others and mm. when to stop and what not to follow, what to follow, that kind of thing. Yeah. So hopefully it just like reminds people and gives people like comfort that everyone- They're not the only ones that yeah. like it is normal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree with that. You've also spoken on your channel about your mental health and the concept of pill and the way that that's maybe affected you yeah. at times. Why do you feel like you want to be so transparent on your Instagram? Is it because you feel like you've got like a social responsibility? Um, I guess a little bit. Um, Again, just because I get so many questions about it. Like I feel yeah. like some people feel like they can talk to me talk about to stuff. You. Yeah, which I really love because I feel like growing up, you're maybe not always surrounded by people you can talk to. Yeah. Depending on like what your yeah. friends are, what your family are, like situation is, that kind of thing. So I just like to speak about that kind of stuff because I know from experience and it, it's sometimes hard to reach out to people. Yeah. Um. So if I like try and talk a little bit about it and share my experience, it again mm. just helps people and makes it not seem as much of a daunting thing or something that like yeah. no one goes through. Um. Like the contraceptive pill, for example, like, yeah, I was on that for two years and it was just stress wow. <laughs> I mean I feel Tell like it was a that. I feel like it was a combination of a lot of things like it wasn't just that yeah. but um yeah I was just struggling really badly like there was a lot of things going on in my life like mm-hmm. my personal life as well that just I feel like just overwhelmed me and I got yeah. quite into a quite low place I guess um but now like I'm not on anything and I just feel a lot better I feel a lot more me yeah um, but when you think about it, things like the contraceptive pill, like you're literally putting hormones into your body mm-hmm. and some people need it and that's great. And like for some people it works so well, Yeah. but it's not always the answer or the thing to do, I guess. And that's just like me sharing, that was me just like sharing my side on yeah. it, I guess, when I like have spoke about it in the past. And so. how did you kind of, or how are you overcoming, you know, these yeah. situations? Do you think that speaking about them on YouTube is kind of helping you as well? Yeah, I guess it's like therapeutic to some degree. Yeah. Like it's kind of nice sitting down and like just chatting about stuff and then posting it because then a lot of people reach out as well and kind of say, oh, like I felt the same. And for yeah. me, that's also great because then I'm like, right, like it's not just me. Like yeah. I'm not just like going crazy here. Like I know it's kind of nice for my side as well. So I feel like we all just get to share our 
feelings and thoughts <laughs> and it's like therapy for everyone. I so love that. it's good. Okay, now on the topic of social media, I wanted to ask you, for anyone listening who doesn't know, Instagram are removing likes or they're I've looking to this. remove likes. So Is this like legit? It's I think it's legit. Okay. Yeah, we're getting nods around the room. I think it's legit. So I think they've actually rolled it out in a country already. Okay. Um, it's not happened to the UK yet, but I think they are looking to do it. And I think for anyone that doesn't know, the aim of doing it is that people aren't won't then spend so much time focusing on how many likes yeah. they're getting, but actually instead enjoying posting. the platform, yeah. which is a really nice message. But I wanted to know what you thought of that from an influencer's yeah. point of view. Do you know what we did? I feel like I was spoken about this with a couple of friends recently because yeah. we were. I didn't know if it was going to be a legit thing. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't think it's the worst thing. I think, if anything, like, yeah, it will encourage people to not worry so much about, like, how many likes I'm getting, like, what comments I'm getting, like, et cetera, et cetera, and actually just post what you want to post. Yeah. Which is what it was intended for to begin with. It was just, like, literally an app to, like, post photos and share stuff. And I feel like now now that it's become a platform for business, Mm -hmm. it's, like, taken way more seriously. Um, I don't know how it will affect us as influencers. I guess. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think it's the worst thing. If anything, I think like it will help people again, maybe use social media in a better way, yeah. hopefully. Do you ever find, do you ever struggle with it? Because I feel like girls who aren't influencers or girls with smaller followings, so just like your everyday girl like me, let's mm-hmm. say, um, may be affected when a certain friend doesn't like a picture or yeah. a certain friend doesn't comment on it. And these small issues can really affect people. Right. And I think that's kind of where it, it kind of comes, comes from as well. From. Does that affect you at all? Like, do you ever get annoyed when Mads doesn't like your picture? Like, does it uh-huh. happen to you guys as well? Because I feel like for people yeah. that aren't influencers with big following, they, they, they see yeah. it, yeah. I don't think so. I just assume they've not seen it. I mean, do you know what Instagram's the most- <laughs> But you know. I mean, do you know what? Instagram's the most frustrating platform to some degree because the way your feed works, you don't oh, always see so everything. Annoying. Yeah. So I never take it personally. No. I'm just like, if one of my friends hasn't liked something, I'll just assume like, A, they're busy, B, they've not seen it, something along those lines. Yeah. I don't know. I've never really thought of that. I'm gonna like be <laughs> it's thinking, quite, like, I hope keeping I'm an not eye out now for everyone. Into your mind now. Yeah, it's not something that we need to think about. Keep an eye. Um, okay, so with everything that we've sort of spoken about there, what advice would you give to anybody who is struggling with their own body image or with their own self-confidence mm-hmm. or comparing themselves on social media? What advice would you give to them? Um, if social media is not helping you in that aspect, in that aspect, then maybe spend less time on it. Yeah. I think I think that's a good thing to do because it's really not the be all and end all. Mm-hmm. And like I feel like when you put your phone down and you actually just like enjoy what's going on around you, like you really get yourself into a different mindset, like yeah. a better mindset. Um, and it's just it sounds stupid and it's like impossible to say, but just don't compare yourself to other people. Yeah. Um. Obviously, if there's ever things I always say like if there's ever things you want to change about yourself, like by all means, yeah. do what you have to do. But just like love yourself and take care of yourself like be kind to yourself yeah. um and i just think in terms of like body image and stuff it's never actually about what your body's like or how you look it's like your energy yeah like you attract people based on your energy and like if you walk into a room and you're really confident like no matter what you actually look like that's what people gravitate towards yeah. and that's what people love personality yeah it's what's inside. it really it really is um, so it really doesn't matter actually what you look like. Mm-hmm. It's more just the way you kind of like present yourself. And yeah. if you're bubbly and kind, I feel like people always gravitate towards that and love that more than what you look like, I yeah. guess. So, yeah. Okay, and one more thing that I've got to ask on that topic. You've made videos in the past about filler and cosmetic uh-huh. procedures that you might have had. Why do you feel the need to share this on your in, on your YouTube? Yeah, it's a good question. Me and my mom have like a back and forth thing about this. Really? Yeah, well, kind of, because she doesn't necessarily agree with it. And then she always- In has terms of posting or the both. procedures? Both. Okay. Yeah, and then she's always like, maybe you shouldn't be talking about it because it encourages people to get stuff done. Whereas I I don't talk about it a lot, yeah. but like I also won't lie if someone asks me about yeah. something. I think that's my biggest thing. Like if someone asks me, I'm not gonna lie. Um, And I would rather- It's one of those, like, people are going to get stuff done if they want to get it done. Mm -hmm. And I would rather encourage people to go to safe practitioners rather than, like, non-safe ones. Because you hear a lot of stories about girls going to, like, like, I don't know, certain beauticians or whatever and things, like, not going well because they're not trained properly. So I would rather talk about it and, like, share my experience and just encourage people to, like, if you're going to do something... A, don't feel like you have to do it just because I'm doing it or because anyone else is doing it. Yeah. Like you have to do it for yourself and then B, just be safe because that's the most important thing. Because the last thing I would ever want to do is something to happen to someone. Yeah. Because I mean, it almost happened to me. Like I had an issue once. Really? Yeah, with filler. 
Um, so I always like to say, just be safe. And what was the issue? Can you tell us? Um, so I've always gone to train nurses yeah. because again, like God forbid something happens that like mm-hmm. you want to make sure you're in the right hands. But I very, I had like a very small, what we think was a vascular occlusion where like Ooh. it gets into your blood vessel. Oh really? No, it's quite serious. But um, luckily like it was fixed quite quickly and yeah. it was like fine by the end. Right. Um, but because I was with someone that knew what she was doing, like I was absolutely fine. Yeah. And like the whole experience overall, like it was stressful and it was scary, but it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Um, so I just always, that's actually when I started to share the fact that I have filler. That's it, it's kind of good to talk about yeah. because people don't think about no. these things and will probably rush into things that's what I mean. without actually thinking. Yeah. So it's good to share. Yeah, that's actually when I started talking about the fact that I'd had filler done yeah. because I was like, look, like if this happened to someone else and they weren't in the right hands, then it could go like drastically wrong. Um, so yeah, that's when I started talking about it. But I don't. I feel like I don't talk about it too much. No, it's more so like if people ask me, then I'm I'm not gonna lie. I think it's also nice that you're you're transparent. You're yeah. honest with your audience. So transparent about everything. Like I'm very honest. Yeah, I'll always like tell the truth. Let's talk a little bit about we we briefly mentioned it before. Okay. So you have recently come out of a long term relationship. Yes, I believe. Yes, and a lot of people have been asking you what's going on. Right. And wanting to know why you broke up and, you know, just commenting, asking questions, Mm -hmm. which I feel like you've been quite vague on YouTube about you haven't really gone back with sort of answers, which, you know, we're not asking you for those answers. But what, how do you feel about so many people wanting to know so much about your personal life? Yeah, it's one of those, again, it was like the pros and cons of sharing stuff, Yeah. um, which I don't regret like sharing any of my relationship. I feel like the good thing is I feel like I didn't share that much. So obviously now that we're not together anymore Mm -hmm. yeah I've had questions about it but it's also like I I don't feel like I overshared anything and I don't regret sharing anything um it's just been a lot and it's been five six months and I still get questions about it now um but I guess it's more so people just not staying fully in the loop with stuff and that's absolutely fine um I feel like now people have maybe kind of like moved past it a little bit but it was one of those it was just um we did keep things fairly private and he's quite a private person. And when we did split up, one of his first things was like, you know, just if it's okay with you, like I'd rather we don't really talk about it or whatever. Um, And I was like happy to respect to respect that. Like I never want to, I don't know, make anyone feel uncomfortable or whatever. So I was very much like, that's fine. And there was never anything like, you know, crazy, like a crazy No crazy drama. No, it was just one of those, like not everyone's meant to be. Um, X, Y, and Z. So, you know, I've tried to like be as respectful as I can to him whilst also still telling people and talking about it because I also yeah. get that it's like, if I'm gonna share something, people will have questions about it. Yeah. So it's still my responsibility to maybe like, you know, I don't have to, but I still I still get why people ask, so. That's what I mean, it's such a hard battle for you because, you know, it's your personal life, mm. but yeah, you yeah. still feel a responsibility to tell people yeah. things to a certain extent. That's what I mean. But I guess because I like, we made the choice to share somewhat Something. of it yeah I still get that I kind of I don't necessarily owe people the explanation yeah. but I owe like a little bit of something. of something yeah which you know I'm fine to like say bits and bobs but I was also very happy to just be like yeah that's fine like I don't want to upset him yeah so, I appreciate yeah, it's that. one of those okay and on that note mm-hmm. are you seeing anyone at the minute no <laughs> no are no. we going with a solid no? I'm going with a solid <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So what's someone got to do to catch your eye? Are you looking for anybody right now? Um, you're just enjoying single life. Just enjoying single life. I'm basically married to all of my friends. Madison. So great. Mads, That's literally. It. Why my would wife you, is you don't need there. anyone else when you got Madison. We were saying this. And you like, got each other. boys? Literally no one. So I don't know. Okay. I feel like... I feel like things always come when you are not looking for them. Yeah. Okay. So I've always had that opinion. And I've never been the sort of person to like need anything like that I yeah. guess so like I feel like you're it, independent you know when it when the time's right something will happen so and you're just gonna be. enjoy the time for yes. now yeah I keep going out with you guys life. Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly so we have such like fun girls night so it's good okay. it's all good good and so you're killing it on YouTube you're killing it on Instagram oh, thank you what is next for you what's coming up oh that is the question I don't know Nothing. do you know what this is probably what scares me because like I need to have a bit of a plan now and like it's not quite there yet. Okay. But it's okay because, you know, I feel like things have worked out so far. Yeah. Have faith. Like, out. yeah, I'm, I'm such a believer in like whatever's meant to be will be. Me too. Everything happens for a reason, like that kind of thing. So yeah. I just think, you know, I'm just going to carry on enjoying what I'm doing. Um, Maybe, I don't know, branch out into a different type of business at some point. 
but we'll see. I'm just, do you know what? I'm just really enjoying YouTube at the minute and yeah. I'm aware that it's the sort of thing you can't do forever. So I feel like for now, I just want to focus on that and just enjoying that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just having a good time with my family and my friends <laughs> and things, so. And is there anything we can look forward to this year that's coming out that we can maybe- Oh, that is a question. Be excited for? Something I can't talk about Ooh, though. I know, I hate being that person. I know. Okay. You, yeah. But there's I'm not, something coming. There's something coming. Ooh. But it can't be talk <laughs> yeah, it can't be spoken about. You're really holding I it. I know, back. really. I've not even really said that. Yeah. On okay. social. Yeah. Well, there you go. Exclusive. I know. We've got something coming something from is Hannah coming, Renee. But we'll have to wait and see what. Can we can we know a time? Maybe is it gonna be this year? Yeah. Me yeah, when? <laughs> <laughs> like push for more. I don't actually, do you know what? If I knew you I would say, yet. yeah, it's I don't know. Yeah. Well, not fully. Not fully confirmed. Okay. Still like in the works. And how will we know when it comes out? Is it gonna be announced all over social, yeah. YouTube? You will know. We'll know. You'll know. It's Hannah Renee, we're gonna know, guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, I will share everywhere. Turn push notifications on now. Thank you. Say no more. Okay. And finally, what piece of advice would you give to anybody who would want to follow your footsteps and become a YouTuber influencer? What advice oh, would you give? Oh, that's actually a really nice question. Um, I guess just work hard, mm -hmm. post what you want to post. Don't take yourself too seriously. Um, enjoy it. Make sure you're posting what you want to post and not what you think is going to like, I don't know, get views or whatever. Because yeah. you have to enjoy what you do. And it comes across on camera, I feel like, if you're enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. And yeah, just fingers crossed it all works out. Fingers crossed. Okay, well, Hannah, it's been amazing getting oh, to know you, you today. I've had me. so much fun. Now we are going to take it to the exclusive part of the podcast. Yeah. For everybody watching on YouTube, you will need to hit the link below to head over to iTunes so that you can hear what's going on in Hannah's DMs. Yes. I can't wait. I'm about to wait and see. I'm excited <laughs> to see. So <laughs> let's see them. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week.